Hey, this is Clean Cut, and we talk about the truth using logic and common sense and stuff. This season, we're discussing the various reasons for obeying God, and now that we've gone over all the best reasons for obeying God, it's time to tackle the worst, the reality of the afterlife. In our last episode, we discussed the existence of heaven, and proved that some form of heavenly afterlife must exist, based on the information we discovered about God in the first two seasons. Today, however, our subject is less pleasant. We're going to be talking about hell. Is there a real hell? And if so, can we prove it? Well, if you start from the perspective that Christianity is true, it's trivially easy to prove that hell exists. After all, if it doesn't, what did Jesus come to save us from? It sure wasn't pain. If that's not clear enough, he talks about it incessantly, several times more often than he talks about heaven. However, I think it's possible to establish the existence of hell even before proving which religion is correct. Here's how. In episode 17, we proved that God's motives can't be based on selfishness, or insanity, or kindness, or the desire to fight evil, and need to be based on charity. Charity always acts for the real benefit of others. However, in episode 31, we outlined one of the reasons for the existence of evil, specifically that charity requires free will, and free will contains the potential for evil. Putting these two conclusions together, we find a picture of the afterlife which is incredibly clear. God has charity for everyone, but charity requires a charitable response. God loves people perfectly, and therefore the response should be perfect as well. Total devotion to others, total charity. However, nobody can reach up to that bar on their own, and many people would not only give up trying, but even become disgusted with charity and refuse to have anything to do with God. Now, because God wants what's truly best for human beings, and being all-knowing is aware of our inability to reach perfect charity on our own, it follows that he has a method of elevating people to that level by his own authority. Now we have another question to ask. Would he do this against the person's will, or only when the person wants him to? The answer is that God will only elevate a person to perfect charity if they want that perfect charity, because to do otherwise is impossible. It's like trying to force someone to freely do something. It's incoherent, like a round square. As we said before, real charity requires a similar response. So we human beings need to have at least some charity in order to accept God's gift. Because some people want nothing to do with God's plan and refuse to have any part in being charitable, he gives them a place appropriate to their choices, a place where they can be away from the charity that they've rejected, away from him and from the joy and happiness that come with him. That's a little complicated, so if you want, you can think of it like this. Hell must exist, or else the people who die cursing God, psychopaths, tyrants, evil dictators, would all have the same ultimate fate as the people who put real and courageous effort into following God's will for them. And that doesn't seem correct. What do we know about hell? Well... Just as heaven is very close to God, very close to charity, joy, peace, and all the other virtues we discussed in season four, hell is very far away from these things. People in hell are not joyful, hopeful, peaceful, and most especially, they're not charitable, because that's the choice they made, and God loves them too much to deny them the right to make that decision. So we know that there's a heaven and a hell. That all makes sense. Hell is where people go when they refuse to cooperate with the will of God, and heaven is where they go when they accept the mercy of God and his plan to perfect them. But is there anything in between those extremes? Seems to me the majority of people aren't absolutely opposed to God's plans, nor are they totally ready to commit to being made perfect yet. That's why next time we'll be asking, what happens to the people in the middle? That's all for now, so keep asking questions and... Ah...